fuel metering unit. From the filter, fuel flows into the fuel metering unit, which is the heart of the K Jetronic system. The metering unit contains a number of chambers which equates with the number of engine cylinders. For ease of explanation, only two of these chambers are shown. The chambers are divided in half by a thin steel diaphragm, providing an upper and lower half to each chamber. The lower chambers are interconnected, so fuel can flow into all of them. When the fuel pump is running, fuel is delivered via the accumulator and filter to the metering unit lower chambers, and then via a return line back to the tank. This fuel flows continuously whilst the engine is running. Fitted as an integral part in the metering unit is a pressure regulating valve and spring. The regulating valve is fitted with a rubber O-ring to form a good seal and is held on its seat by the spring, the tension of which is adjustable by steel shims. With the engine switched off, the regulating valve closes and therefore no fuel can return to the tank via the return line. With the engine running, fuel delivered by the pump builds up a pressure in the fuel lines and lower chambers. Once this pressure rises above that of the spring tension, the regulating valve opens and allows excess fuel to return to the tank. The action of this valve maintains a constant pressure in the system. This pressure is referred to as the system pressure. By adding or removing shims, it is possible to adjust system pressure exactly to manufacturer's specified figures. Situated in the center of the metering unit is a stepped control plunger assembly. The control plunger fits into an open-ended cylinder, which has a number of slots at its upper end called metering slots, and an equal number of holes at its lower end. The metering slots connect directly to the upper chambers, while the lower holes connect to the lower chambers. The plunger moves up and down in the cylinder very smoothly, both parts having been machined to exact tolerances to ensure a fuel-tight seal. With the plunger down in its rest position, fuel can flow in through the holes and around the stepped section of the plunger, but can't pass into the metering slots. However, if the plunger is raised slightly, then a small section of the metering slots is uncovered by the plunger, allowing fuel to flow from the bottom chambers into the top. These slots are very accurately machined and ensure that an equal amount of fuel is distributed to each chamber. The top chambers in detail. Each top chamber has a small diameter outlet which extends down to just above the steel diaphragm. Fitted around this outlet is a light coil spring, which exerts a slight downward pressure on the diaphragm. On the outside of the metering unit, each of these outlets is connected via a pipe to a fuel injector. Hence, the number of chambers corresponds directly to the number of injectors and therefore the number of cylinders. One injector per engine cylinder. So let's just recap by looking at the system so far. We will assume that the plunger is in its fully down rest position and the fuel pump is running. Fuel is delivered to the lower chambers by the fuel pump and the system pressure is maintained by the regulating valve. With the plunger at rest, no fuel pressure can get into the upper chambers. The system pressure pushing up on the diaphragm flexes it upwards and closes the outlets. Therefore, no fuel flows out to the injectors. However, if the plunger is raised, the metering slots are uncovered slightly and fuel under system pressure can now flow into the top chambers. This pressure, plus the pressure of the springs, flexes the diaphragm back down, which opens the outlets to the injectors. Fuel now flows out to the injectors. Remember that this action is happening at the same time in all the other chambers, and so unlike many other fuel injection systems, all the injectors spray fuel at the same time, continuously. If the plunger is lifted further, then more of the metering slots are uncovered, allowing a greater quantity of fuel to flow out to the injectors. 
The movement of this plunger is controlled by an arm which is connected to the airflow meter. Airflow meter. The airflow meter, or sensor plate assembly, is situated between the air filter and throttle housing. Any air flowing into the engine has to pass this airflow meter. This consists of a circular plate in an alloy housing. With the engine running, airflow causes the plate to lift, which in turn, by a lever system, lifts the control plunger in the metering unit. The further the throttle is opened, the greater is the airflow into the engine. The greater the airflow, the further the plate lifts the control plunger, which increases the quantity of fuel delivered to the injectors. Together, the airflow meter and metering unit maintain the ratio of air and fuel required for correct combustion. It is essential then that there are no air leaks between the airflow meter and throttle housing, as this will affect the air to fuel ratio, causing it to be excessively lean. A means of adjusting the mixture is provided by an Allen screw situated in the lever assembly. Turning the screw in a clockwise direction raises the plunger slightly to uncover a little more of the metering slots. Hence, the mixture is richened. Turning the screw in the opposite direction lowers the plunger and the mixture is leaned. Always remove the Allen key after each adjustment. If the key is left in place, it restricts the movement of the airflow meter arm. Opening the throttle may result in air pressure distorting the arm assembly. Injectors. Several different types of injectors have been used over the years, although their operation remains the same. The injectors continually spray a fine atomized mist of fuel into the inlet manifold behind each inlet valve. These injectors open and spray at a predetermined pressure, which is set by the manufacturer. No adjustment is either possible or necessary. Each injector fits into an insert which is screwed into the cylinder head. The injector is held in place by a rubber O-ring, making removal simply a matter of pulling the injector out complete with the O-ring. The O-ring must be inspected for cuts before refitting, as an air leak here will cause uneven running. If you have any doubts about their condition, fit a new set of O-rings. Enrichment for cold running. A method of enriching the mixture for cold running is provided by varying the fuel pressure on top of the control plunger. This pressure is controlled by a unit called the warm-up valve. A small quantity of fuel is directed from the bottom chambers via a small restrictor to the top of the control plunger. From here, a pipe connects to the warm-up valve which is situated on the side of the engine, and from there, back to the tank via the return line.